Hello, and welcome to the How to Install Sage 100 PDF Converter. Uh, my name is David Overholt. I'm with DWD Technology Group in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, I guess you're probably here today because you're trying to print something from Sage 100 and you're getting an error 30 or an error 41. Uh, printer not installed, printer not activated, some message like that out of Sage 100 when you're trying to print. Uh, the messages are indicative that you're printing to or trying to print to paperless office in Sage 100. Uh, and the Sage 100 PDF converter is not working properly. So my goal here is to show you the easiest way to install that printer. Um, I'm going to also show you some things ahead of time that you need to do before you start installing that. Um, things to watch for along the way. And a couple of after items that you can do to try and make sure that printer continues to work. Uh, so I will go ahead and get started. Um, so first thing, uh, before you even work on installing that printer, you'll want to come and look at what printer is already installed on this workstation. Um, here is a list of the printers on my workstation. You will see right now there is no Sage 100 PDF converter. Uh, if you do see it in your list, um, you don't necessarily need to remove it or anything. Um, but it may have a, a yellow yield sign or something like that on that. Uh, but what else you'll want to look for on here is any printers that are not active, not installed. Uh, if you've got an old printer from 10 years ago that you threw away and it's still showing up on your Windows list of printers, uh, I would advise to get rid of that. Um, things like that can actually cause problems within Sage 100. Um, you also want to make sure that you have a default printer. If you click through all of your printers, none of them are set to default, then that's going to be an issue. Um, so I would go ahead and make sure you have at least one printer set as your default. Mine is down here. So. Another thing I kind of want to mention in generalities, um, you'll want to make sure all the steps that you're doing here, you, you are in, logged into the Windows operating system as an administrative user. Uh, if, you're, if you don't have admin rights on this local workstation, you're not going to be able to do most of the things that I'm going to show you here. Uh, so if if you're having trouble even opening like printers and scanners or having the manage button, uh, it means you're not logged in as an admin user and you'll want to get a hold of IT. The other thing, if you are logged into a terminal server remote desktop, uh, Citrix environment, you'll want to check with IT too because if you, you don't want to be installing and removing printers on a uh, remote desktop, because you're affecting all the users that log into that. So uh, the instructions I'm giving are for, for a local workstation running Sage 100, uh, even if it's on the network. So, uh, so a little housekeeping. I don't see my Sage 100 printer here, and that's OK. If you do, that's OK also. We're just going to go ahead and keep on. Um, so next thing, when you log into Sage 100, um, you'll want to right click and do run as administrator. And uh, again, I'm trying to show you all the things you'll want to do to make sure this installs properly. And one of those things is to make sure you click on run as administrator. Even if you're um, logged in, as I said, as the administrator or the local admin on this workstation, still click on run as admin. That makes sure that state is running in administrator mode. OK. Uh, if you see this message, user account control, do you want to allow this app? That tells me that your user account control settings are are set above the minimum. 
You can click yes, but again, my advice, uh, we're trying to get this done properly, so we're going to say no to make sure this thing installs. So go out to user access controls. Notice mine is set to the second lowest level. Uh, wherever this is, take this down to never notify. Click on OK. You'll get the little same little message. Then what I do is I go right back in here, launch it again. And I'm not necessarily checking to make sure it's set, but I want to leave this up on my screen kind of in the background. That's to remind me that when I'm done here installing, that I can, uh, that it reminds me to reset that the way it should be. So right click on Sage, run as administrator. I didn't get the message, that's a good thing. Uh, if you are getting the prompt for company code like I am, you'll want to log into whatever company you're having the issues in. And once in Sage, click on File, Run. Yours may come up blank in here, but you'll want to type in BL underscore advanced past tense options underscore UI. So I'll leave this up here for a second. PL Papal's Office Advanced Options underscore UI. Capitalization doesn't matter. I just type it in like this because I, it's easier for me to read. Click on OK. So this use lock file and automatically install converter should be checked. They should already be checked, but if they're not, go ahead and check them. Uh, click on uninstall converter. Even if you did not see this H100 printer in your list, then turn right around and click, uh, sorry, it says the PDF is not installed. Click on install converter. You'll get this little taskbar that pops up. When it's done, you'll see the PDF converter is installed correctly. If you don't, something went wrong. Um, but you should at this point because we're, we are logged in as a local administrator. So the next thing I look at is my printers. Ah, there it is. Shows up on my list now. That's a good thing. Uh, I'll just minimize this. Come back in here one more time, file, run, yell advanced options. Should remember what you did last. Now I'm going to test my converter. This will test the Sage PDF converter is installed properly. It will also test the Adobe Acrobat Reader, which you do need to preview or print uh, PDFs, but you don't need it to actually create them. But you'll want to have that on there. So this will test both. Okay. Ah, good. I got my test of watermarking. This is a test. Let's see. So this is what should pop up at this point. That means it's working properly. Okay. Excellent. Now we know it's working properly. But we had launched Sage 100 as the administrator. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try and launch it. Not as administrator. Okay. I'm going to go in one more time, not running as administrator, because this could make a difference. So file, run, the advanced options, test. Okay, mine was successful. If yours was not at this point, it it may be a permissions issue. Well, it most likely is a permissions issue because we can run it when we're running as admin, but we can't run it when running as whatever user is logged into this workstation. So now is a good time, assuming it worked, go ahead and turn your user account control settings back the way they were before you started. Okay, got that housekeeping done. So let's go back into printers. Actually, I Printers and scanners, I actually had it open, but come to your Sage 100 PDF converter, highlight it, and click on Manage. 
Go to Printer Properties, Security. Go through this list of all the users, highlight each one individually, and make sure this uh, all three of these checkboxes are turned on. Print, Manage this printer, Manage Documents. All application packages, this is important because this Sage 100 is an application, and when you're printing the paperless office, it's probably going through there. Creator owner, you can turn this on if you want, but that doesn't actually save. Don't worry about it. creator owner. Make sure everything on this list now, as I click through each one, everyone, all applications, David Overholt. Okay. Once those are all set, click on Apply, click on OK. So now that's, that's important to make sure you can manage that printer and the applications can manage the printer. OK, um, last thing you want to do after you install it is go into the Registry Editor. And I will note that if you're not sure how to use the Reg Edit, I would get an IT involved. Um, only make changes to the Windows registry if you're familiar with this process and you know what you're doing. Um, you should always create a backup before you make any changes. And because if a change is made incorrectly, your computer's operating system may not function properly. So that's my caution warning. Uh, so to make a backup, I'm not going to do it because it takes a minute or two, but go, come in here and click on File, Export. Just give the backup a name. See, this is the one that I created earlier. Then click on Save. It takes about a minute. Well, mine takes about a minute, minute and a half. It shouldn't take a huge amount of time, but you will need to wait on that. So I'm going to move on without actually doing that. Once you've got your backup, when you're in the Registry Editor, go to H key local machine and go down to software expand that and you should see your sage 100 pdf converter in this list uh, again if it's not that's probably indicative of some rights issues when you had to install it so you'll want to go back to that step and uh, log in as an administrative type user so once you're in here, Sage 100 PDF Converter, right click on this and go to Permissions. Make sure everyone has full control and read rights to this printer. If they're not there, check them and click on Apply. Okay. Okay, so that basically is the final step I wanted to show you. Uh, if you go through all these steps, you're still having problems, um, or if you have any questions on anything that I've covered today or really anything Sage 100, uh, again, my name is David Overholt. I work for DWD Technology Group in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Our 800 number is 800-232-8913. Uh, and you should, you will see uh, all of our contact information at the end of this video. So I hope this was helpful, and I hope everyone has a great day.